Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning everyone. Uh, welcome to experiment one, corrosion of metal for KIT 357 Industrial Practicals. So my name is Dr. Muhammad Azhar bin Hussein and I am your uh, corresponding lecturer for this experiment. So before we start, I hope you have uh, read through the manuals. So basically, uh, this experiment we cover a lot of uh, corrosion of metal to expect, especially starting from the fundamentals of uh, metal corrosion until the effect of uh, corrosion, uh, techniques for corrosion protection, and also uh, other aspects for corrosion protection such as uh, passive layer and corrosion inhibitors. Uh, before I start uh, the experiment, let me first review a little bit uh, about corrosion of metals. So as you know, um, corrosion that uh, actually means that uh, degradation of uh, materials or metal uh, by means of chemical uh, or electrochemical reaction of metal with its surrounding. So when I talk about uh, the surrounding, it is actually related with the presence of water and oxygen. So corrosion is also uh, with the reduction uh, and oxidation process where uh, oxidation process occurs at the anodic side and reduction process occurs at the cathodic side. So the oxidation process, which I mean here, is basically the dissolution of metal. For example, if you have iron, Fe, it will be oxidized to become Fe2+, plus, uh, plus 2 electron. Meanwhile, the reduction process uh, is basically the formation of hydroxide ion, OH- minus, with the presence of oxygen and water. So, uh, basically, there are uh, a few effects uh, that can uh, I mean, uh, give a different corrosion rate, such as the effect of surface area of metal, the effect of uh, oxygen concentration, the effect of stress uh, of a metal, and etc. So, all these factors actually influence the corrosion rate and even uh, the current values that you will observe later in this experiment. So bear in mind that the concept uh, in electrochemical process is that if you have a higher current, then it means that uh, the rate of corrosion will become high as well, and you will see that the process of corrosion will be high as well. There are five techniques for corrosion protection, which you will have to Thing, uh, learned so far from my lecture in uh, materials chemistry, KIT257. Uh, the first method will be material selection. Second method will be by changing the environment by introducing corrosion inhibitors. Third, by applying uh, met, uh, coatings such as uh, organic coatings or metallic coatings. Uh, and then uh, the other techniques will be imposed current techniques such as cathodic protection and also and lastly, uh, we can protect metals by means of uh, a proper design. Okay, so let's uh, go through the experiment, I think one by one. So as I said, this experiment is divided into five major parts. The first part, experiment A, is basically to understand uh, the nature, the redox process of uh, metal corrosion. Okay. Uh, experiment B is actually to study the effect of uh, corrosion. What are the aspects or factors that can influence the corrosion rate? Third, uh, cathodic protection, effect of cathodic protection. Fourth, um, passive layer uh, or the effect of passivation. And uh, lastly, the effect of corrosion inhibitors. Okay, so um, if you see from this experiment, there is a lot of uh, step procedure that you need to prepare uh, in order for you to start this experiment. The first thing, uh, that you need to prepare is, of course, you will be provided with uh, a set of uh, materials and chemicals that you need to prepare. So first, you need to polish different types of metals provided over here. We will uh, provide you different uh, metals, copper, aluminium, zinc, iron, and etc. And then after that, you also need to prepare uh, different uh, types of solution. For example, the first solution that you need to prepare is uh, NaCl solution, 5% NaCl solution, followed by other types of uh, solutions such as ferroxy indicator, 
uh, and other types of uh, solution depending on which part that you are doing. Okay. So for experiment A, um, as I said, we are trying to determine the anodic and cathodic reaction in function of uh, iron. So in this case, uh, you will actually uh, prepare a peroxyl indicator. Okay. So peroxyl indicator is a mixture between NSL solution with phenolphthalein indicator as well as uh, potassium uh, ferric cyanide solution. So it will produce a pale yellowish color solution which eventually used as an indicator to check uh, the color uh, changes uh, of a metal. So uh, I think in experiment A, you have uh, two different sets that you need to do. First is uh, the metals that you uh, want to study will corrode naturally by just uh, making a X uh, mark on the surface and then after that you drop the peroxy indicator on top and you will see the color changes. Okay. So the color changes that I mentioned over here is it will produce two different colors, blue and green. So blue actually means that the complex that forms uh, between the peroxy indicator with uh, the presence of Fe, uh, two plus uh, ions. So this will uh, produce uh, a blue color uh, complex and this means that if it changes into blue color, then you know that in the environment it contains more Fe2+. So uh, what does it mean? If you have more than Fe2+, uh, then it means that the process actually occurs at anodic or the process uh, is actually oxidation. Meanwhile, if the process uh, gives you a red color change, then it means that uh, you have a presence of uh, hydroxide ion or H- minus uh, ions uh, present in the solution, then this peroxy indicator will complex or will be reduced into red color form. So here it means that you have a lot of OH- ions and this also indicates that the process is basically a reduction process and it occurs at the cathodic side. So that is why I think for experiment uh, A1 and A2, for A1, uh, the experiment uh, where the metal is being uh, corroded naturally, you just put an X mark and for experiment A2, you will do it uh, in an electrochemical cell. You will put uh, two different metals, iron and copper, in this cell, and you will fill with the uh, ferrous indicator. So you will see the color change. Which one between iron and copper will become anode, and which one will be cathode? Okay? All right. So experiment part B actually is the effect of, um, uh, of factors that influencing corrosion. So you will study the effect of cathodic uh, surface area, oxygen concentration, and stress uh, on corrosion. So experiment B1, you will do a setup where you will have um, a two similar dimension of uh, metals, uh, iron and copper, put in a, uh, in a beaker and fill with um, NSL solution. So you will measure what will be the current, and next you will change the cathode by changing the size of uh, copper plate into uh, 9 times 5 centimeters and you will see the current uh, values also. So please note that they, they will give you a two different current values uh, and actually what we are uh, expecting is that the one that produces a higher dimension or higher surface area will produce a higher current value. Okay? So that's the reason behind that that you need to discuss in your report. Okay, so next will be the effect of uh, oxygen concentration. So in this case, you will put uh, a two similar metal, which is iron, in this capillary tube. So you will put um, this uh, iron in these uh, two compartments and you will fill it with NSA solution. So straight away, you will measure the current. And after you measure the current, okay, um, you will polish back the metals and bear in mind that every time you change uh, the plates or the metals, you need to polish it. So the reason why is because even a very small exposure to the environment, the metals that you already polished can easily corrode, then it will affect your experiment. So that is why I mean every time you change uh, the plate or every time you change the experiment, uh, you need to polish back the plates. Okay? So after you polish back the plates, you put inside. Uh, but before you put inside, um, please put... Uh, the oxygen pump inside 
one of these compartments, so you will bubble it. Okay, so it will be concentrated with oxygen, and after you have purged it for maybe a few minutes, just stop, you stir it, and then you put back the plates, and the iron plate, and then you measure back the current. So basically, the one that um, with the addition of oxygen bubble will give slightly higher current as compared to without uh, oxygen bubbling. And the last uh, part for experiment B is basically the effect of stress on the metal surface. So in this case, you will be provided with a screw and a nail. You need to polish it first and then you will put a pair of indicator and you will see the color change at different sides. So similar things, we want to see which one is anode, which one is cathode. So then again, you need to uh, relate this with the electrochemical or the redox process that happens uh, during the process. Right, so moving on to experiment C. Experiment C is basically on the effect of cathodic protection. So remember that uh, in two, KIT 257, what does it mean by cathodic protection? So cathodic protection, it means that metals to be protected will become cathode and uh, metals that sacrifice itself to become anode is known as sacrificial anodes. Okay. So the concept is very simple. If you want to protect a metal, you just couple it or you just pair it with a more active metal which uh, for example I want to protect iron okay, from corrosion so I just um, pair it with a more reactive metal such as aluminium, zinc, uh, magnesium or etc. So uh, these metals will become anode because it's more electroactive uh, meanwhile uh, iron will be uh, cathode and it will be protected. So the experiment is very easy you just um, need to put different sets of or different pairings of metals starting from uh, iron with copper pairing you put inside this uh, cell again you put NSL solution and you measure the current and then you change the pairing with uh, iron with uh, uh, aluminium measure again the current okay. and lastly you have a pairing of uh, iron with zinc okay. and you measure again the current so you will have a different current values for different pairs and uh, from here uh, you can uh, determine which one actually will produce a more uh, active or more uh, better cathodic protection reaction okay and uh, moving on to experiment d experiment d is actually the effect of passivation so um, before you start this experiment you need to polish uh, a small plate with a small dimension which you will dip it in a fume hood. I mean, you will dip it with uh, nitric acid in a fume hood. And so you let it for a while until you reach experiment D. Okay. So after you have reached this uh, experiment, so what you need to do first is the metal that you have dipped with nitric acid, you will uh, uh, rinse first with distilled water. And then you will dip with uh, a copper sulfate solution. So the first dipping actually doesn't give any changes because you just dip for a few seconds, you remove out and then you see the color uh, difference on the surface and next, using a metal scraper, you just uh, scratch on the surface of uh, the metals and then you dip again uh, into the copper sulfate solution and you will see that uh, there will be some changes on the uh, metal surface. So the uh, reason why it is not uh, giving any uh, changes on the first dipping and why it gives uh, changes or uh, a difference in uh, dipping number two is need to be explained in your report as well. Okay? And finally, we are uh, going to the last part of this experiment which is the effect of corrosion inhibitor. So you will prepare a different uh, solution starting from uh, zinc sulfate. Eh? You will prepare uh, potassium chromate solution and you also need to prepare uh, sodium nitrate solution with a similar concentration 0.1 molar uh, concentration and what you need to do is you need to uh, put inside a beaker okay um, you will place it with uh, uh, iron and uh, uh, platinum electrodes connected with uh, the milliammeter and you will actually read current for each individual solution, starting from NSL solution, 5% NSL, NSL solution, followed by 0 0.1 zinc sulfate, followed by 0 0.1 potassium chromate, and lastly, 
0.1 molar uh, sodium nitrate. Okay, so um, that's all actually for experiment one. So uh, now we are moving to the practical part. I think my assistant are ready to show the experiment. So we will go through one uh, experiment individually and then uh, of course later on uh, hopefully you can understand uh, what I have briefed you earlier on this part. So with that, thank you. Hi guys, welcome back. Um, as I mentioned earlier in the first briefing, uh, first thing that we need to do during the experiment is to polish the plate. So you will be provided with different types of plates starting from copper, zinc, aluminium and iron. Okay. So what these students are doing right now is actually to polish the plate. So you can see that uh, they are doing uh, wet polishing using uh, uh, sandpaper. So this is very much important so you guys know that wet polishing actually uh, will uh, facilitate the abrasion process. Okay. And please remember that when you do the polishing, it must actually go in one direction. Eh? Okay, just one direction without a multiple direction. This is actually to ensure that we have a very homogenized uh, surface later on. Right. So remember that before we start uh, experiment A, we need to uh, polish a small plate which we will use it for experiment D. Okay. So let's join me. Actually, we have uh, prepared or polished the plate. So the plate that we have prepared will be uh, dipped into nitric acid solution for a while. Okay, so this as part of the preliminary um, uh, preparation for experiment D for the effect of passivation, right? Okay, right. So the next part after we have polished uh, the, uh, the plates is that we need to prepare different sets of uh, solution. So we will start with uh, this one, five percent NaCl solution. Okay, so this actually can be uh, produced in one liter. So, if you understand the uh, calculation, the chemistry behind it, if you want to prepare 5% in 1 liter, you need to measure around 50 grams of NSL solution dissolved in 1 liter of uh, distilled water. And apart from that, uh, you also need to prepare this one, 0.5% uh, potassium ferric cyanide solution. Okay. And the rest is actually for the other parts of the experiment. For example, this one is for experiment D. 0.1 molar copper sulfate solution and then for experiment E uh, 0.1 molar of zinc sulfate uh, 0.1 molar of uh, potassium uh, chromate and lastly 0.1 molar of um, sodium nitrate okay okay so before we start experiment A we need to prepare a ferrous indicator so ferrous indicator can be prepared by uh, mixing uh, NSL solution with uh, potassium ferricinac and finally uh, ferrophilin. So there's a different measurement for that. Uh, of course, for 5% uh, NaCl, you need to measure around 200 ml. And then uh, you need also to uh, measure around 100 ml of potassium ferricinac and finally 20 ml of uh, ferrophilin solution. Right. So the procedure of uh, producing the ferricinac, uh, sorry, ferrous indicator is first by mixing the uh, NaCl solution, 200 ml. And then uh, we will add 100 ml of potassium ferric cyanide solution. And finally, uh, 20 ml of phenethylene solution. All right. So, uh, next we will uh, mix it together using a glass mold to ensure that the uh, mixture is uh, homogenized. And this is actually the resulted uh, ferrocy indicator that you will get. The color is almost like a pale, whitish, uh, yellow color. Okay, right. So after we have prepared the ferrocy indicator, so we can start uh, with experiment A, which is to determine the anodic and cathodic reaction of a corrosion of a metal. So uh, this experiment is divided into two parts, which is the first part, uh, we need to follow the metals naturally, and second part, we need to follow the metals by the existence of uh, uh, multi ammeter Okay, so come and join me. So the first um, part, we will have this uh, polished plate of uh, iron. So the student need to 
make a X mark using a metal scraper. So make sure that you push it hard and then place it on the petri dish. And after that, uh, you will cover the X mark with the ferrous indicator that you have prepared uh, earlier on. Okay. So you just cover the whole thing. Okay. Right. So we just leave it uh, aside for a while. Okay. Uh, until it produces a, a more visible color change. But even now you can see some uh, uh, production of a uh, uh, blue color, especially at the scratch area. And even some red color uh, at the edge of the drop. Eh? You will see some red color, reddish color. Okay, so moving on to the next part of the um, experiment is we need to do the corrosion by the assistant, uh, assistance of um, electrochemical setup. So you will have a two polish plate of uh, iron and also copper, right? So you will put inside this cell, okay, like that, and you will pour in the ferroxyl uh, indicator solution. Okay, so after that, um, we will use a multi emitter, okay, to actually to give the currents. So how to use it is very simple. So you just switch on the main plug, and then after that, uh, you can clip uh, each terminal at uh, individual metal. So since we are measuring current, so it doesn't matter uh, which plate will be black, which plate will be uh, red. Okay, uh, all right, and then another one, this one. Okay, and then after that, we will switch on the milliameter by turning the knob into A or current. So you will see that it start to produce a, a current value. And even later on, you will see there's a color difference on the uh, surface of the plates which theoretically, the red color solutions uh, will form at the copper and the blue color solution will form uh, at the iron. Okay, so let's go back to the A1 experiment that we have produced. So now it's more visible. You can see that um, the side of the droplets uh, become red and the scratch or the center is become blue. So this indicates that the presence of uh, Fe2 plus and also the presence of OH minus ions in the solution. So in your report, you need to discuss why these things happen and uh, write the half equation to relate the process. Right. So uh, same thing for this part. Uh, you can see some uh, color change. Uh, a blue color can be indicated at uh, the side of uh, iron, and then uh, some red color can be indicated. Uh, on the copper plates, so indicating that uh, oxidation and reduction process occurs uh, during this electrochemical uh, corrosion reaction. All right, moving on to experiment B. Uh, B1, we will uh, study the impact of cathodic surface area. All right, so what we are going to do here is we will have a polished plate of uh, 9 times 2 of iron and 9 times 2 of copper. Okay, and for the other setup or the other uh, dipping will be a pairing of uh, 9 times 2 iron with 9 times 5 of uh, copper. Alright, so we'll proceed with the first one. So first thing, uh, you take a beaker and then uh, you will put NaCl solution inside. Any amount as long as the plate uh, can be dipped into this solution. Alright. Then after that, uh, we will place the plates inside this uh, beaker. All right, and finally, we will clip it with the milliameter. Oops. All 
Okay, right. So nice. So after we have clipped uh, this uh, electrodes together, so we switch on again the milli emitter, turn into A current. So let it wear for a few seconds. Okay. And after that, you press hold. Then you will record this value as the current value for the first setup. So the current value is 1.9 microamperes. Okay. Right. So after you have uh, recorded the value, so just release the hold value. Okay. And then uh, switch off the milliammeter and clip the plates. The cable again. And right now we will place the other sets of uh, plate okay right this time we have a larger surface area of copper and after that switch on again the milliammeter so let it for a few seconds and you will press the whole button and you will see that uh, the current value produced over here is 4.6 microammeter. This is actually slightly uh, larger as compared to the first values that you have recorded earlier. So you need to discuss what's the difference between the first setup and the second setup. Okay, so we are going to proceed with experiment B2 which is uh, to determine the effect of oxygen concentration. Alright, so here we will use a two similar polished plate of um, iron, okay, and we will put inside this uh, capillary cell, okay. But this capillary cell need to be filled first with NaCl solution first, right? So the amount actually at least uh, the capillary part uh, need to be filled as well, okay. So we don't have any specific volumes for that. Over here, just to ensure that we have a uh, equal uh, volumes of the capillaries over here. Okay, so next we are going to put the plates in each compartment. Okay, and we will clip again the plates with the cables. Huh? Okay, so after that, we go again to the milliammeter, switch on to current, and we are going to measure the current by pressing the whole buttons. Eh? So the whole button, eh, we just uh, leave it for a few seconds. The reason why we need to press the whole button is uh, it will actually take time to produce a very stable current, but uh, in order to make this experiment uh, smooth, so you just let it for a few seconds and then after that we press the whole button and we record the value. So the first setup for this one without any oxygen bubbling is 2.5 micro amperes. Okay. All right. So what we are going to do next is we will unclip again the cables. Okay. So we have to remove the plates again because as I said, each plates need to be polished uh, fresh. So in the meantime, while polishing the plates, okay, I will put the oxygen inside one compartment. So we will bubble it for a few seconds or a few minutes. So the longer that you bubble the uh, oxygen, the better the result is. Alright, so we have 
the two polished electrode uh, or the metals again. So before we proceed, we need first to switch off the pump. Remove the tube. Okay. And then we just stir it a bit just to ensure that it is mixable, saturated. And again, we will put the plates into this compartment again. Right. So we switch on the milliammeter. Just leave it for us a few seconds and we measure the current value. Okay? So you'll see the difference that uh, now it produces slightly higher current as compared to the previous one. Previous one is around 2.5 something. And now uh, with the presence of oxygen bubble, the current value produced is around 4.9 microamperes. So again, in your discussion, you need to discuss why the second setup produces a higher current as compared to the first setup. Alright guys, so the final part of uh, experiment B, uh, B3, is actually to study the effect of stress on the corrosion rate. Okay, so in this experiment, you will be provided with uh, two materials, uh, a nail and a screw. So you need to polish first these two items. So after you have polished the two items perfectly, uh, you will put the peroxide indicator inside. Okay, so we just cover the whole things uh, with peroxide indicator. Okay, so and then we will let aside uh, for a few seconds until it produces um, a color change. Alright, so uh, after a few seconds, uh, we will notice some color changes. So the first thing that you need to understand is you need to see the observation at the top, middle and bottom of each material. Okay, so over here, we can see that... Um, at this part and this part, uh, it shows a different color, uh, blue. And at the middle part, uh, there's some slight uh, pinkish or reddish color over here for nail. Meanwhile, for uh, screw, you'll notice there's a pink color slightly on top. And then at the bottom part, uh, it is completely like blue color. So. The middle part and the bottom part of a screw uh, give a different observation as compared to um, the nail. So in your report, you need to discuss why uh, these things happen. What will be the effect of a stress eh, for a screws? Because screw have a lining, which we can say that it can be to scratch or stress on the surface. That may influence the corrosion rate of a material. Okay, welcome back guys. Uh, now we are moving to experiment C, uh, corrosion protection by means of cathodic protection. Okay, right. So, come and join me. Okay. Uh, so, for this part, we will have a different set of um, metals pairing. We will have uh, iron with uh, copper, we will have iron with aluminium, and also iron with zinc. So, to do this experiment, it's very simple. So, first we need to uh, at uh, NSA, NSA solution inside this uh, cell. Okay. And then after that, we will place the metals inside the cell. And finally, we are going to clip each metals with the crocodile clips. And after that, we we'll switch on the uh, multi emitter again and we will read the current values again. So the current value for the first setup um, 
iron with copper is 5.9 micro amperes. Okay. So we release back, we switch off. Okay. And uh, we remove the metals. And now we put the other pair, which is iron and aluminium. So same thing, we're going to clip. We cover that clips and we we'll switch on the milliammeter and record the value. So the value is 7.1 uh, micro amperes for iron and aluminium uh, pairing. Okay, so finally, we, have, we will have the last pairing, which is iron with zinc. Okay, so place it. All right, so after we have clipped, uh, we switch on the milliammeter. And uh, after that, we will get the current value for uh, iron and zinc pairing uh, produce around 6.5 micro amperes. Okay, so welcome back. Uh, we are moving on to experiment D, uh, corrosion protection by means of passive layer. Right. So if you remember the first part of the experiment, we have put the small uh, mask plate inside the uh, nitric acid solution. So, after we reach the experiment, we can remove out, uh, we take out the plates, we rinse first with distilled water, thoroughly with uh, distilled water. Okay, and then after that, we will dip first in distilled water for a few seconds. Alright, so we can remove it out. So, we observe first the color of the surface, it's quite shiny. And then we dip into copper sulfate solution for a few seconds and then we remove out and we'll see the color difference first uh, okay it's not much changes okay right we put on the petri dish and then we use a metal scraper to scrap off the surface you can push it harder again into uh, distilled water just to clean it just to rinse it for a while and then remove it out and put into the copper sulfate solution so this one we just leave it for a few seconds okay so after a few seconds we remove out and we can see we notice the difference the color now the surface is become uh, bronze Meaning that there's some uh, reaction happenings on the surface of the uh, master plate. So remember the first uh, dipping, what's the color difference? And after we scrap, uh, we scrap off uh, the layer, um, we dip it again in the copper sulfate solution and it produces a different observation. So in your report, you need to discuss what happened when you, uh, I mean, uh, dip your mild plate in uh, nitric acid and what happens without any metal scrap, uh, scrapping and after metal scrapping. So this needs to be discussed in your report. Okay, so now we are moving to the final part of this experiment which is part E, uh, the corrosion protection by means of corrosion inhibitor. Okay, so for this experiment, we need to prepare different sets of solution and SAR solution, the remaining uh, solution that we have. 0 0.1 molar zinc sulfate, 0 0.1 molar potassium chromate, and finally 0 0.1 molar sodium nitrate. Okay, 
So the experiment is very simple. So first, we will put um, sodium chloride solution inside this beaker. Okay. And then we will put a polished plate of iron. And we will also put a platinum electrode. So what we are going to do next is we are going to measure the current value. Right. So after we clip everything, we just switch on. Okay, so we just uh, take the reading. The reading for NSL solution is around 7.9 uh, micro amperes. Okay. So we remove the electrodes. Okay. And then we put another solution, 0 0.1 molar zinc sulfate. Okay. And then we're going to read the current values. Okay, so the current values over here is around 26.9 micro amperes. So next we are going to put uh, 0 0.1 molar uh, potassium chromate solution. So we measure the current values. The current values is around 4.7 micro amperes. And the final one, we are going to put sodium nitrate solution, 0 0.1 molar sodium nitrate solution. Okay, so this is actually the value, 4.7 micro amperes for sodium nitrate solution. So basically after we have done the experiment, we can see the difference between uh, NSL solution, zinc sulfate, uh, potassium chromate, and finally sodium nitrate. And in your report, you need to discuss which one produces a lower current. Uh, so theoretically, lower current um, give the best corrosion inhibition, meanwhile higher current uh, will give a higher corrosion rate or less corrosion inhibition. So with that, uh, thank you very much for listening to this experiment. So wish you all the best and hope to see you again. Stay safe, stay at home.